Just doing an update video on my homemade solar power system. I haven't done one for a wee while. I'll just let you see where we've gone with uh, previous videos. So there are my two solar panel arrays that I've put together. And at best at peak I've seen them get up to about 700 watts. And uh, that's running into a outback charge controller I've got in the garage here. This thing I've done a bit different with this setup. Um, a lot of it's been done on, on budget. Obviously, charge control is quite an important thing, so I need to spend some money there. Uh, I've uh, also, uh, sounds like the fans just kicked in on that. I've also uh, got myself a, um, a uh, 3 kilowatt uh, inverter there. That's continuous output, it's rated at like that. Obviously a bit more on surges or peaks. But the difference probably really here is the batteries. Um, I see so many people, still amazes me that these people are doing this as well, using these horrible lead acid batteries, um, which these aren't. Uh, the ones at the back are Edison cells, which are nickel iron, alkaline based batteries. Uh, very similar to the nickel cadmium bank, which is next to it there. Just the chemistry is just a little bit different, but still alkaline based, the same electrolyte. Amazing, these batteries are, are so old. Um, the Edison ones I think are about 70 years old. Now I'm not going to say that they, they've still got like new air ratings uh, as far as ampere storage, but it is still quite surprising just uh, um, that these batteries still function and uh, to a manner which is still quite usable. Uh, these uh, ones here, the nickel cadmium ones, are about 48 years old, so just shy of 50 years. I did a load test on them a while ago, measured the hours and the current they put out, and uh, it proved that these things still have over half their original rated capacity, which uh, really quite surprised me. So, uh, yeah, it's a far cry from these lead acid things, that's for sure. I'm not suggesting people get these for a brand new installation, but uh, it amazes me people aren't making more use of these uh, nickel iron phosphate batteries, uh, which seem uh, not nickel iron, sorry, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, there are a few people using them, but uh, it is interesting to see that there's um, alkaline uh, metal or alkaline base type batteries seem to be uh, an awful lot more superior. So it'll be interesting to see what these um, lithium iron uh, phosphate batteries are going to be like in the future. Most of them are guaranteeing 10 years uh, at least for the guarantee. So uh, they must be fairly confident with them, I guess. Anyway, so this is my solar power system. It's backup system for the place uh, since we're at Christchurch where we live here. We were subjected uh, to a lot of earthquakes uh, going back about two, three years ago. We had no power on this property for over a month uh, here. That's how bad the infrastructure was damaged in the city. And still there was problems with uh, sewerage and water and other things uh, three years later. Um, very slow as far as repairs go. So this is my backup power where we can run back up to the house if necessary. Through extension cords I might add. Because uh, during the earthquake the power cable, you can see down the corner here, it comes up through the floor that runs this garage. Um, that got separated with land movement, so there's no power on this garage at all. And uh, so not only is back up, but it's also been a, a way of powering my garage for my projects. We come over here, when I'm not making or using machinery down here, grinders, angle grinders, compressors and stuff. Um, I use some of the surplus power to make distilled water for drinking and for our batteries. This is about uh, six, yeah, about 600 watts this thing's pulling at the moment. And uh, you can see the water distilling away there. So, you never know when you might get caught short of power systems. Oh, I started this project uh, putting some of these panels th together before the earthquakes happened. I didn't have the system up and running properly at that time. But that's what it's come to. And uh, of all, all the places in New Zealand, this being a bit of uh, an area in the Pacific uh, Ring of Fire, so they call it. Um, you know, we are aren't, you know, not aware that we can have earthquakes here, but Christchurch was deemed to be probably one of the most unlikely spots for any serious event. So, uh, yeah, amazing what happens sometimes. You can get caught, caught out. 
So I'm not a doomsday guy, like a lot of people out there on the net, but um, there's nothing wrong with having backup power systems, that's for sure. And as a hobby, uh, for me, it's really uh, paid off for, you know, like some uh, running my shed and bits and pieces. And if we move in the future, I'll be able to take this equipment with me and set it up there. Uh, so yeah, there you go. But um, as I say, I would never bother using lead acid batteries again after seeing how these ancient vintage things still work. Uh, yeah. I've got lithium ion phosphate battery in my camper. It's only a 100 amp hour one. We use that just for run running lights in our fridge in there. Uh, I've got about 500 watts worth of solar panels on the roof of that. So even on overcast days, the battery's always fully charged, even when the fridge is running. So uh, here we go. Hope that is of some interest.